let's talk about that boost control system on the 2015 and up WRX. So it's a bleed style boost control system. And and bleed style is something that uses a two port solenoid and uh, you can upgrade this to a three port uh, solenoid, uh, which is an interrupt style boost control system, but the bleed style seems to be favored by by the Japanese brands. The the Mazda Speed uses uh, uses something very very similar to control its boost. So let's go over it because it's actually kind of kind of a neat neat system, and it's good to understand what's uh, how it runs. So first, here is the compressor, uh, your your turbocharger, the cold side of the turbocharger, which is pulling in air and, and compressing it and pushing it into the engine. You will see here that you have several lines. One is this first line here. This line takes boost pressure directly from the compressor side and feeds it into this T, which you see right there. Now, this T has two paths. One path is this line that travels all the way up to the wastegate actuator, which is right there. And this is what ultimately controls your, your wastegate uh, flapper uh, and, and controls your boost. And the other side of the T, right here, if you follow it up, it actually goes to the boost control solenoid. It's very hard to see. It's up here. So this is that two-port solenoid we talked about. Now, the two-port solenoid has, as, as the name implies, two ports. One is attached to this line. And then the other side is actually plugged right into this kind of turbo inlet cast elbow, which, uh, which is low pressure. So this is the, the intake side of the turbo. Now, how does this all come together to control your boost? Well, the, I'm just gonna flip that like this. So the, um, the turbocharger generates boost and, and it pushes your, your wastegate uh, open when it has reached that, that optimal boost to maintain that pressure. And that means that it maintains that same turbo speed and, and so on. So in order to do that, there's a spring inside the wastegate. And uh, if you didn't have any of this control system, you just had one line going straight to the wastegate, you'd run whatever that spring is set to from the factory. Uh, in cars like this, it's, it's set quite low, somewhere between 6 to 10 PSI in OEM cars. But as we all know, the car can run more boost than this. So in order to do that, you basically have to lower the line pressure in this line that's going to the wastegate actuator compared to what your turbocharger is actually making in this line. And that's, that's the whole point of this boost control system. So your turbocharger will make pressure in here and inevitably that pressure will, will reach via this T, will reach your wastegate actuator. However, this second line here that's going to the two port solenoid its its purpose is to take away that pressure to lower the line pressure on on here and it does so by bleeding off hence the bleed style bleeding off pressure into the intake so basically recirculating it to to the to the low pressure side and uh, the more that it does that the lower the pressure here versus what your turbo is actually making and then because of that, the higher the amount of boost that you're able to run. Now, there's another little interesting bit about these, uh, about these boost control systems in these cars, and that is that they have what are called restrictor pills. So why and what's the purpose of the restrictor pill? Well, imagine that the turbo is making a healthy amount of boost and it's pushing air into this line and, and you know, the wastegate is seeing that pressure and then this solenoid is trying to bleed it off. It's trying to bleed it as much as, as possible. It's a 100% wastegate duty cycle. But even so, the turbo is, is, is large enough such that it actually fills this, this line faster than the solenoid can bleed off. So effectively, by doing so, you're not going to see the lower pressure in this line, which will allow you to raise your boost. So the solution to this is to put a restrictor pill in this line coming from the pressure source. And that restrictor pill is is basically a it's exactly that it's a pill in here with a very small opening and by having a very small opening you're restricting how much air the turbocharger is able to fill these lines with 
these lines. So past that restrictor pillar. Restrictor pillar is right there. So how much air is it able to fill these lines with? Because of that, the solenoid, which is bleeding off from, from this line and, and, and bleeding off from what the wastegate sees, is now able to keep up with it. So that's the entire purpose of the restrictor pills. It is to, to allow the solenoid to effectively lower pressure. If you didn't have the restrictor pill, um, the turbocharger would just fill these lines so quickly, the solenoid would not be able to effectively uh, lower pressure, and therefore you wouldn't be able to increase your boost above spring pressure. So hopefully this uh, shed some light on to how the boost control system works on the uh, Subaru WRXs, and uh, until next time. Thank you.